show is biased. The boys are back by popular demand, fired up and ready to go. We have Raheem Palmer. We have Joe House, who has been traveling left and right. He just finished up the NBA over under pod extravaganza with Simmons and Russillo. And of course, JJ Johnson Stremsky. Uh, House, let's start here, buddy. You're in one piece. You survived every over and under with the NBA. Do you feel good about the pod you put together with the two fellas? I always feel good when I'm spending that amount of time with those two gentlemen. But I will say, you know, when we sat down together, uh, the group was a little bit nervous about how the whole thing was going to play out because it feels like a lot of teams NBA wise are hard to get. Uh, your your finger on the pulse. But once we went through it, I feel like there was decent consensus across the board. I mean, I'm nervous because one of our absolute favorite bets was the Phoenix Suns over 47 and a half. And then our good pal, John Ewing, um, published out on Twitter that it's like the most popular bet uh, uh, in, in America. And I was like, oh God, here we, here we go. Well, you never like the sound of that. Raheem, we're going to spend some time over the next few days giving out all sorts of over-unders. I am very excited to see you Sunday in our wonderful studios out in California. And Raheem, before we dive into this crazy week in the NFL and we dive into a bunch of these games that we like, am I going to be celebrating a pennant in your presence? I sure hope so, Raheem. Yeah, I think you are. I think I definitely think you are. This Cleveland team can't hit. We saw the game, too, and it felt like they had the bases loaded against Garrett Cole multiple times, and they just couldn't knock any guys in. So I think it's the Yankees' time. Maybe we get a Subway Series, or maybe we're going to the World Series in L.A. We get that Otani-Judge matchup. That's kind of what I'm looking for, to be honest with you. Well, that's what I'm looking for because my heart and my sanity and my overall mental well-being cannot handle – the possibility of a Yankee Met World Series. And there are going to be a whole lot of divided New York households if indeed that goes down. Uh, Speaking of New York and speaking of a team that plays in New York, no, not the two baseball teams that are in the league championship series, the Jets house, who you and I happened to bet, you gave it out on the uh, Ringer Sunday pregame as your wisest wager. I gave it out as my dog of the week. And You know, for what it's worth, guys, they gave out a three-leg Monday parlay that I thought we were going to bring home. I gave out the Yankees. They did their job. I gave out the Mets. They did their job. The Jets did not. And it was a very Jetsian type of loss house. That's really the best way to describe it, from uh, Tyron Smith missing blocks to missed field goals to, you know, not scoring on red zone opportunities. Forget about the Monday night game against the Bills. I want to get to this Devontae Adams trade. They're two and four. And basically the worst kept secret in the entire NFL was that Devontae Adams wanted out of Vegas and he wanted to be reunited with his buddy and his pal, Aaron Rodgers. Well, he gets his wish. He's going to the Jets. The Jets, despite all the turmoil, despite the two and four record, I have news for you guys. This morning, as I'm getting ready for East Coast bias and we're going through our rundown and I'm kind of going through the card and figuring out things I want to bet, I added a bet. And it's not a game. I bet the Jets plus 135 to go and make the postseason house. Their schedule is incredibly soft in November and December. They now add a receiver that, yes, didn't want to play in Vegas, but most certainly is going to want to play with Aaron Rodgers. No questions about chemistry and rapport. I think the Jets have their problems. I don't think they're a Super Bowl team. But with Salah out, Adams in, I'm on board. Plus 135 to make the playoffs. What say, Joe House? So that's interesting to me because the Adams uh, addition doesn't really move the needle that much for me with this Jets team. I mean, the Jets team could not, under any circumstances, stop the Bills from converting third downs. I think the Bills were 1,000 for 1,000 and converting third down uh, uh, to keep, keep drives going. The problem with the Jets was their upfront pass rush in that game against Buffalo. They couldn't put any pressure, any meaningful pressure on Josh Allen. Now, Josh Allen is is, is a hard donkey to, 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 to corral for sure. I get that part. But uh, the, if you're going to do something with personnel, there's a guy that you traded for in the offseason. He's sitting right there. Just give that man his money. Put Hassan Reddick on the football field. I was impressed by the Jets' play calling, and it did look like 
there was a little bit of innovation. We finally saw the version of Brees Hall that people had in their minds uh, with this Jets team fantasy football-wise. Uh, Mr. Wilson got his touches. Um, Lazard was fine. And look, if you want to like sort of be narrow um, focused about it, Mike Williams didn't look like he belonged in a professional football field. So if you're upgrading the Mike Williams position into Devontae Adams, great. Double thumbs up. But you got to be on both sides of the ball to deliver this. Having said all of that, I like your bet, JJ. I think plus money for the Jets to make the playoffs is sensible, Dream. I, I don't think it's crazy. I don't think it's crazy, but it's not necessarily a bet that I necessarily want to make when I look at the rest of the landscape in the AFC. I do think it's just a, a huge upgrade. I mean, when you look at the chemistry between Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams, they combined for three seasons of over 1,300 yards and five seasons of 10-plus touchdowns in their eight years together in Green Bay. So, like, Mike Williams isn't reliable. And if you watch the last two games, Aaron Rodgers threw interceptions toward, like, to the direction of throwing towards Mike Williams. So that's going to change. And it's also going to open things up for Garrett Wilson. So if you open things up for Garrett Wilson, you open things up for Brees Hall. I think this offense, it may not be elite, but it's going to move into the top 10 category. And right now you're looking at a team who is just what their 11th in EPA per play 14th in success rate. I think that if they can get that into the top 10, top five, it'll cancel out some of the issues that they have with their run defense right now, they're really struggling to stop the run. So I, I do think this, this moves the needle a little bit, but they really got to get that defense together. They do. And their defense to me was just not up to standard, not up to par against the Buffalo bills. And I totally get it. House. the whole Hassan Reddick situation is bizarre. Now his new agents are coming in and they're basically demanding a trade from the jets. So the fact that they screwed that up as badly as they did is an awful look, but a lot of times when these trades go down midseason, there's major questions about, hey, what's the chemistry going to be like? What's the rapport going to be like? Is the certain player going to have any, you know, questions about playbook and learning and offense? Well, the offense is brand new. You had a new play caller in there. And the quarterback, Devontae Adams, Raheem knows him as well as anybody. And I know this Steeler game, we'll get to it later. Tricky game. Then they play the Patriots. They're not going to lose to the Patriots. Guaranteed. They're not losing to the Patriots. Then they get the Texans at home. If the Jets can get two and one house in those next three, listen to these games they have coming up. At Arizona, home Indy, home Seattle. Now Miami, what's the deal going to be with Tua? Who the hell knows? That's obviously a different game if he plays and if he doesn't. But then I see Jacksonville. I see the Rams. Outside of Buffalo, I just think it's a very favorable schedule for the Jets. And I'm kind of just betting on the fact that they get to nine or 10 and they get to the playoffs. I think it's very feasible. I agree with you. Your rundown of those um, teams, like none of them are, are flat out gimmies other than New England, but they're winnable. And this Jets team with the way, the way it's constituted personnel wise on both sides of the ball should win those games. They'll be favorites in all those games. I assume as long as, you know, we don't have big, big injuries. Uh, I just want to see the version of this Jets team that we thought might take place, you know, in the, in the preseason, we still haven't seen them on both sides of the ball. Other than that stupid Thursday night game against the Patriots. We haven't really seen that version of this team. All right, let's get to the other big trade, Raheem. The Buffalo Bills, who have been in dire need of finding themselves a number one wide receiver, they go and get Amari Cooper out of the witness protection program in Cleveland, and now he gets to go and play with a top five quarterback. I, for one, have always been an Amari Cooper fan. I think he's tough. I think he's reliable. And unlike Adams, there is that question of, hey, how will he come in and learn a new offense and gain chemistry with Allen? I, I think you'll see some of those questions, but a lot of Josh Allen's game is kind of predicated on backyard football. So if you know how to get open down a field and if you have reliable hands, Josh to me is going to be able to go and find you to football. I think this is a monstrous deal for the Buffalo Bills. They needed help at wide receiver. I mean, I'm watching Mac Collins the last few weeks running balls down a field. That ain't going to work. I love this for the Bills. Does this, in your opinion, Raheem, change anything now about the ceiling for Buffalo now that they have themselves a number one wide receiver? 
I don't know if it changes anything because I think a lot of us, we like Buffalo to make some noise in that division anyway. So Amari Cooper just, he has to stop dropping balls. Like I, I saw that game against the Raiders. He dropped the ball. He didn't help Deshaun Watson out at all. So, you know, maybe it was a thing to where Deshaun Watson was just so bad that nobody around him just, you know, played up to their potential. But I need to see the Amari Cooper that I saw with the Dallas Cowboys with the Buffalo Bills. But I do think this is a great move for the Buffalo Bills. Yeah, I totally agree, uh, Dream. The the interesting thing to me, JJ, you described the uh, uh, Cooper as as a number one receiver arriving. I, I don't. I won't get all sort of tied up with with the you know what we want to call him. I think Shakir is still like the number one receiver receiver, but. What Amari Cooper delivers, and if you could just look back a couple years, it's that possession receiver, that crucial receiver on third down when you need to move the chains. He's if he if Cooper plays that Cole Beasley role, remember how Cole Beasley was always the dude that Josh Allen would find on these crossing routes when he needed seven yards on third down. I think Amari Cooper could play that role, and I think we're going to see a pep in his step. Um, joining this Bills team. I love this move for the Bills. Yeah, I expect him to be revitalized. Look, he's in a situation, Raheem, that's as bad as can be, and you're not wrong. The drop rate is not where it needs to be. But when you have a quarterback who's incapable of getting you the ball on a consistent basis, so you're getting the very best out of that particular player, I think there's very much doubt about that. It kind of is the same as Devontae Adams in that mysterious hamstring injury that all of a sudden now it is miraculously cured and a okay the house that sounds like uh that sounds like me trying to get out of school after a late night yankee game oh i got that i got that yankee flu you know a little tickle in my throat (laughs) uh so Devontae adams we're gonna see against the steelers final bit of news though speaking of the steelers house what's going on with the quarterback situation now mike tomlin is basically saying, even though they are a 4-2 and two team and they're coming off a win against the Vegas Raiders, we're going to get Russell Wilson work with the first-team offense to now there's a whole lot of speculation in Pittsburgh and there's a whole lot of speculation in my neck of the woods in New York that Russ could play Sunday against the Jets. Don't you wait for a loss? Don't you wait for one of those games where Fields is like 10-30 and he throws a couple of picks? And then maybe you make the change. This seems weird to me. Weird. I, I agree with you um, that that it's weird. And it, it must be the case that Fields and Arthur Smith are not on the same page. I mean, Fields has been okay. He was okay in that Dallas game. I, I, I'm not sure why we don't see more Fields using his legs. Because that was such a weapon in Chicago. Uh, and it was by design. I feel like we're missing that element and, you know, Pittsburgh with its run first attack is, has been super like inefficient offensively. Uh, I'm not sure. I guess the idea is that Russell Wilson's deep ball will be appealing, but who's going to tell George Pickens to go run all his routes for the entire game with enough oomph to make a deep ball worthwhile i i agree that it's weird um and i i'm not sure uh that that i i have an explanation for it dream yeah this is very very strange i can't you know make heads or tails out of this other than the fact that when they signed russell wilson they probably promised him the starting job and mike tomlin doesn't want to renege on his promises so that's the only thing that makes sense to me but i think justin fields with his legs he adds another element that you you have to prepare for. And I think that makes him dangerous. Now, he hasn't used his legs as much as he has in Chicago, but he still used them. You look at last week, he had 11 rushes for 59 yards, and, you know, he ran for a touchdown as well. So I just think it's it's tough for me to get here on this decision, and I think you're going to have a lot of people betting the Jets, fading Russell Wilson here. Yeah, I can say – from a Steeler Jet perspective, and we'll dive into this game when we start running through the matchups, I would be far more willing to invest in Pittsburgh this week if you told me that Justin Fields was going to be starting at quarterback. If it is Russell Wilson, I am either in a stay-away category, or if anything, I look at the Jets as maybe the side that I would want to back because I think the Jets would have more trouble, quite frankly, with Justin Fields because 
they can't stop the run. And then you're going to throw in a dynamic running quarterback. Yes, Raheem hasn't run as much as he has in years past. But I, for one, if I were Arthur Smith and Mike Tomlin, would want that wrinkle going into Sunday. All right, we got a lot of games to get to. We will start with the game this evening when we return. The homecoming for the Golden Boy of the New Orleans Saints, Sean Payton, who actually was featured in the Amazon promo. You know, like when they show the two faces, usually it's like two players. Like you'd get, you know, Buffalo, Miami, they'd show two and Josh Allen. No, for Denver, New Orleans, Sean Payton got the graphic, just like Belichick did. Is Sean Payton going to be getting the last laugh in New Orleans? We'll break it down. We got picks. We'll get to the juiciest game of the week, a Super Bowl rematch. And guys, you might have to talk me out of what I'm going to do a little bit later on in the show. We got it cooking for you every which way. East Coast Pies Boys just getting started. We're coming right back. Let's get to this Thursday night game house and, and let me get it out of the way. I hate this game. I, I, I absolutely hate this game. Thank God that there's baseball on Thursday. Yankees at five Mets and Dodgers game four at eight, because this will be the smallest of third screens. Actually, it'll work. It's way to the second screen. Who are we kidding? It's football. It's Thursday night. And I'm probably going to have a wager on it. That all being said, Denver got a lot of hype. Last week, going into their matchup against the Chargers. Oh, their defense is playing great. Oh, they have the look of a team that maybe can go and surprise. Hey, you you like them. For goodness I, I was one of them. I was yeah, one I didn't of them know on you. the I hype you were on the I was Broncos. wrong. Yeah, I, I, I lean Chargers. I didn't love the game. I was a stay away for me. Now, Sean Payton, coach of New Orleans, as we know, for forever. Won a Super Bowl there. Made his mark with Drew Brees. This is his first game returning to the Superdome. And the narrative around the Saints... It's changed quite a bit. Remember, guys, in week two, or I guess it was week three, we were getting ready for that Eagle game. We were talking about the quote-unquote historically good New Orleans Saints offense for the first two weeks of the year. Well, New Orleans has regressed inevitably. Uh, They now are in a situation where they are two-and-a-half-point dogs on the road against Bo Nix and the Denver Broncos. House, you were on Denver last week as a dog. Will you be on them this week as a favorite? I am definitely on Denver this week uh, as a favorite. And um, just at the highest level, the, 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 the dumb handicap is Sean Payton, Dennis Allen. Oh, I don't think Sean it's dumb. Payton, <laughs> Dennis House, Allen. I, don't, I don't think it's dumb. You know, we could talk about how square that might be and how elementary that might be. Uh, yeah, that matters. And, and especially when I have a coach who's way better in a game that you know he desperately wants to win. How's, there's nothing dumb about that. Yeah, it's fine. I, I mean, the real – you're going into it. The Saints are in a terrible spot. We, we have two straight weeks with these Thursday night games of a team on its third game in 11 days. That sucks. Those teams suck. They, they, they're, they're not healthy. They can't put bodies on the field. And the Saints especially are, are dinged up at all crucial positions. They have three offensive linemen that are all messed up, guys missing. Obviously, Derek Carr. Obviously, Chris Olave. Uh, Rashid uh, Shahid is out. Like, who, who is the? Who are the Saints putting on the field? It could be fun to be talking about the rookie quarterback matchup of Bo Nix and, and Spencer Rattler. But <laughs> I think Vance Joseph has this uh, Denver defense cooking, and I am nervous about Spencer Rattler going up against this Denver defense dream. Yeah, I'm very nervous. Like you mentioned it, Chris Olave, Rashid Shahid, their speedster. You look at um, Cesar Ruiz, he's out. Like, so it's just the offense is just absolutely depleted. You're, you're looking at Bub Meems and, and Mason Tipton. I mean, guys that you got to be a hardcore NFL analyst to know. Um, so um, it's just really tough sledding for, for Rattler here. And, you know, the biggest thing is that, like, I, I just don't know what the Saints do on either side of the ball. They gave up 51 points to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers last week. So the defense is falling apart as well. Now, the one caveat is that Patrick Sertain is out. So maybe it's a little bit easier for the Saints to, you know, move the ball through the air. But there's just not a lot there. So, I like, I can't really get to this number. You know, two and a half point road favors with Bo Nix is, is is crazy, but I can understand the move. I think the way I want to approach this is to play the under because I mean, I know it's 37 and a half, 
But who's scoring points in this matchup? I think, you know, the odds makers are telling us that neither side is going to be able to score efficiently. And, you know, actually on FanDuel Sportsbook, as I look right now, this total is going down to 36 and a half, which is (laughs) – um you kind of can cough, sneeze, and get over it. But I think you still go under on this. And then I also, because of so many injuries to the Saints, I think you need to be looking at Alvin Kamara props. You know, Alvin Kamara um, over rushing attempts. Alvin Kamara over yards, just because that's the only way for them to, to operate. The total, Raheem, I'm glad you brought it up. Mm-hmm. Because my instinct was like yours. I think it's an under game. I think it's one of those gross, disgusting Thursday night football games but we're seeing the total come down. When does it get to a point? Like 37 and a half, I was ready to fire. I didn't. And now I'm seeing 36 and a half. And I'm starting to get a little queasy. You mentioned Sertan may not play for Denver. That's a big loss. New Orleans, and I know Baker Mayfield and the Bucs have one of the better offenses in the league. And they have been incredibly efficient over the first five or six games. So I want to put some respect on Baker Mayfield and what he's been able to do with Tampa. But, yeah, there are some issues with that Saint defense. When, when do I get to a point with 36 and a half where I say, yeah, this is, this is too low for my liking? Or do you still think there's value there? Um, I think you kind of wait for a 37. Like, I know it's 36 right now as we're recording this on FanDuel Sportsbook, but I think you can just wait. You know, even if you have to wait in game or even if, ha- if you have to isolate this and, you know, maybe play a first quarter under six and a half, no touchdowns you know, or maybe a first half under 18 and a half. It's just, you can find other ways to play it. You can kind of wait this out. You know, the public loves betting over. So maybe this goes up a little bit. Maybe some of the public says, oh, I got to bet the other side. So I probably would just wait for the best number or just look to isolate this in game. Fair enough. Uh, How's some ride with you with the Broncos in this game? And I I understand the scary nature of laying points with Bo Nix on the road in a tough environment to play. Like a lot of that does not sound particularly appetizing. Um, I just think the saints are kind of a team that to me at this point in time is spiraling. They're spiraling from a standpoint of injuries. They're spiraling from a standpoint that the head coach is not any good. Uh, They lose their starting quarterback who, yeah, there are questions about him. And I know Rattler was okay for portions of that game last week against Tampa Bay, but, we're still talking about a backup quarterback in the spot. And I know if there's one game Sean Payton wants, maybe more than any other game that he's going to get this year, it's the idea of winning his first game back in New Orleans. So you kind of started this convo saying, yeah, it's the obvious Joe Public sentiment of Sean Payton coaching against Dennis Allen. But, you know, it's sometimes obvious analysis is accurate analysis. I'm with you. Holding my nose. I'm playing it because it's a Thursday night game and I want to have a little fun. How's we're riding together with the Broncos? The question is, do we lay the two and a half or do we just bite the bullet and take the money line? That's the question. Well, I personally have cooked up for our best bet segment, so I'll save it for that. A little wow, free Denver legger. has Ooh, worked okay. their way in the best bets. Well, wow. But it's in the money line. I, okay. I like the money line. I prefer the money line. Mm-hmm. And then I parlayed it because I believe in human achievement. I do think there is some opportunity for certain aspects of the Denver offense to get cooking, but I'll save it for best bets. We'll do it properly. Save it. And by the way, our parlay that you gave out that I was planning on giving out, but it was a family parlay nonetheless. We brought it home last week, House Niners, Thursday night. There was never a sweat in that game. We took them on the money line. And then Cincinnati, where we did very much sweat it out in the fourth quarter, so we we got a tough act to follow here with these uh with these parlays. Is that I feel like that's now your thing on Thursday. You're not just gonna give us one, you gotta give us two, you know? Well, I, I wish that I had played it, you know, for the for the wise wager on the Sunday pregame show, you know, trying to cash some tickets here. But I'm just gonna do a little same game parlay and then we'll see. Maybe I'll pair up uh, Denver with another team. I will tell you right now, I have done the research. If you wanted to put the Buffalo Bills and the Denver Broncos together in the same game parlay, it's it's plus uh, money. It's it's like plus 102, plus 103. I mean, who's going to mess that up? Buffalo uh, can't possibly uh, lose to the Titans. Uh, 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 I like oh, it. Oh, man. I like it. Raheem, <laughs> you know, one last note on the Saints. At the mm. beginning of the year, when I, we did our futures, I gave out New Orleans as an under at seven and a half wins. And I have to admit, guys, after the first two weeks of the year, I thought I completely lit money on fire. I was like, wow, this is... 
this is not looking particularly promising. Now, we got a long way to go, and I'm knocking over my computer, and I'm too excited talking about this as we speak. That said, Raheem, I think seven and a half, I got a new lease on life here. I think I'm okay. Yeah, I do think you're okay. And, and obviously, you're talking about a, a head coach that is 26 and 50 throughout his coaching career. So <laughs> it's hard to fade that. And then you look at all of the injuries, I think you're in a good spot, especially when you consider the rest of the division is pretty good outside of Carolina. How about that house, the NFC South, hashtag better than we thought. You know, I tried to go on uh, the FanDuel Sportsbook to see what New Orleans um, win total, the current, because you could play regular season wins during, if they're, they're, they're not on the board right now. I'm not sure, probably because of all, all the injuries. injuries. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Um, but I would be interesting to see, you know, how, how has that number moved any? Well, seven and a half. So next I know, time FanDuel. I know, that was your preseason. Next, next time they put them up, house. We'll have a little compare contrast. I like the sound of that. Now, when we get back, we start diving into the card for Sunday and Monday. Fantastic slate of games. Raheem and I are going to be, we're going to miss your house. I know you were out in California early in the week. I hate to miss you, boys. We are going to be, we're going to be slobbing our faces, eating buffalo wings. I'm probably going to have pizza and beer all over myself. Hooting and hollering for Tyler Hundley, but no, no. There are juicier games than the Dolphins and the Colts. So I'm just being a little sarcastic here, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you catch my drift. A Super Bowl rematch. And am I going to, dare I say, do it again? I can't wait for this one. I'm actually glad that the fine folks over at The Ringer and FanDuel TV and Spotify picked this particular weekend for a couple of the guys to be out because, you know, we've had some crummy Sundays. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I thought last week the matchups at 1 o'clock were incredibly uninspiring. Yes, house, thumbs down. This week, you got some epic games on the slate. We'll get to the Texans and the Packers, which to me is a fantastic game. But I'm starting with this one, Raheem. It's a Super Bowl rematch. In fact, the last time the Chiefs and the Niners took battle, we were together in Las Vegas. We are at a Super Bowl party. You know I had my Niners future. You know I had a couple more on the Niners to go and win the game. And you ended up getting a live wager on the Chiefs. We all know what happened. Jackpot, Viva Las Vegas, Travis Kelsey. And I'm crying. Uh, You're celebrating. And the Chiefs, once again, win the Super Bowl and beat the Niners. Now, they've beaten the Niners quite a bit. They beat them in two Super Bowls. They beat them when they played heads up a couple of years ago. Yet, the odds makers have decided, Raheem, to give us Kansas City plus one and a half against San Francisco. Now, I probably have no credence to go and do what I'm about to do because you guys could probably smack me across the head and say, are you this dumb? Are you honestly going to do this again? Yes, I am taking the San Francisco 49ers. I am not messing with the points. I am taking them on the money line. It's minus 115, minus 120, not screwing around there. I don't like where Kansas City is at from a health standpoint. I don't like that they don't have Pacheco. I don't like that they don't have Rasheed Rice. They have kind of been fooling around with these games. If we're being real, all these games are close. All these games are tight. They're not going undefeated. They're going to lose a game or two here. And Raheem, I know what the stat is going to be with Mahomes. I know you reference it every single time we do it. When he is a favorite of small number or a dog of a small number, he usually wins all the time. I know that. I'm aware of that. That said, I think revenge. I think the Niners being in a better health spot than Kansas City is my logic here. I'm on the Niners, and I expect you guys to fade accordingly. I'm not necessarily fading this, but in the words of Jalen Rose, not going to be able to do it. I'm not doing it. Like, I say it all the time, and you referenced the stat, the Mahomes, 13-6-1, and 68% when the spread is between 3-3. Three and three. And then there's Andy Reid off of a bob. 24 and 15 against the spread in his career when he has at least 12 days to prepare for a game and 32 and seven outright in those games. You're talking about Reed and Mahomes. That combination is 12 and two straight up with the extra week off. My biggest thing is this. Why am I trying to, you know, reinvent the wheel? Why am I trying to look like a genius by fading Mahomes and Andy Reed in this spot? Now you could be, you could very well be right, but more often than not, Mahomes and Andy Reid are going to find a way to win that game. So I just would rather stay off the game than, you know, fade them in this spot. And when I look at the San Francisco 49ers, 
they just don't, they still don't, they don't look like the same team that we've seen throughout the Kyle Shanahan era. They really struggle in the red zone. You watching that game against Seattle on Thursday night football and they can't score touchdowns. Like Seattle was in that game for large parts of the game. And, you know, Seattle was playing a third game in like 11 days and they were banged up. So if Seattle was in that game, we know the Chiefs will be in the game coming off of a bye. So to me, this is Chiefs or pass. Right now, I'm going to pass. Yeah, I'm sorry, JJ. I got to be w- w- with Dream uh, on this one. I mean, I'm not surprised. I fully expected this. Like, I'm, well, you know, I'm not, I'm well, I'm well aware of the history I'm working against here. Yeah. I guess really what it comes down to, House, for you at least, are you going to be on Kansas City Sunday or are you not going near this game? Because the sense I got from Raheem is, doesn't love the spot for Kansas City. Do you? I, I mean, how how can you love it? It's 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 the the second best team in the NFL. I mean, one A one B here. Uh, I don't think that you could say I have an absolute conviction. Uh, the, the the two observations I'll make in the first place, I think that this number is going to move. I wouldn't be surprised if when people wake up Sunday morning, they're like the Chiefs. Yeah, I want the Chiefs, of course. And and that gets that to be like a pick 'em or maybe even tiny bit of 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 Chiefs favored. But if you're going to play the money line, I would say just wait, um, JJ, because I do think that I don't. I'm not positive this number's going to 100 percent stick with San Francisco favored in this manner. Um, but the other aspect of it is San Francisco has its own injuries. Um, they're injured up the middle of that defense. Uh, Fred Warner's playing, but is he 100? percent I don't know. Hufanga is out. Um, you know, he was a huge uh, 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 impact player, the, the safety for San Francisco, and their defense really suffered down the stretch last year when he went out. Um, and so I'm, I'm a little concerned about that. And there's um, reports you got to pay attention and see when you wake up on Sunday whether Jordan Mason's going to play because if, if he's not, they're down to their third string running back. Maybe it won't matter because none of us heard of Jordan Mason until, you know, he showed up and ran for 150 yards. You know what I mean? Uh, it, it Honestly, a running back doesn't matter with any of the Kyle Shanahan system. Right. I, I mean, Alfred like, Morris, baby. Yeah, Alfred Morris. I mean, like, they're masters at making another hole, like, you know, like Jay-Z said. But it's like, you know, it's so funny because, interestingly enough, and, you know, you're watching that game against Seattle and Jordan Mason goes off off and then the backup comes in and rushes for 99 yards on 10 carries so uh, i mean do do running backs really matter and i I mean i do think they matter to a certain extent i think the 49ers are obviously missing christian mccaffrey in the red zone but uh i mean i just i want to stay away from this game and you know just from a map perspective i look at this from you're probably going to have sharps on both sides of this game you got pros on both sides of this game but i'm laying when you're at when you're betting at the sports books, you have to lay minus one ten. The bookmakers are getting plus one ten on this, so they're going to get the best of us on a game where you probably have the better team in San Francisco going up against the better quarterback. Why do I want to bet that? I'm staying. Yeah, away. I get it. I get it. Um, that said, I have a hunch here, guys. I will be on San Francisco, and I'll probably regret it around four o'clock on the West Coast. Uh, I'll be rooting you guys for can you. All mock me. I yeah, appreciate that because running against Kansas city is now no fun anymore. I'm sorry. It's just no fun. So I, I'm on San Francisco in this game and I expect all the hate to come my way. Uh, Raheem, when we do our little public split on Sunday at like high noon on the East coast, do you think Kansas city is going to be the pub, one of the public plays of the week? I have to assume. Yes. Right. Mm. Yeah, I'm going to assume yes. I, I think a lot of the public, will, they're not going to want to fade Mahomes. That's what I mean. I feel like they're going to see Mahomes either getting points. They're going to see Mahomes, you know, in a low spread situation. They're going to be all over that. So something to consider. All right, House, another game that is marquee that I actually have a very strong lean on as well. But I'm going to go last on this one. The Houston Texans, who took care of business against the Patriots. C.J. Stroud is playing great. They got Joe Mixon back. They lose Nico Collins, so they're kind of finding ways to win. Nothing wrong with that. Two-and-a-half-point dogs against Jordan Love and the explosive Green Bay Packers, the incredibly well-coached Green Bay Packers. I have a strong lean in this game, but I'm going to start with you. You're playing it, you're passing, and if you're not going to play it, who do you lean with? Well, I keep expressing skepticism about this Green Bay Packers team, and they keep shoving it right in my face. 
because the defense keeps producing turnovers at a rate that frankly is not sustainable, but they are inside the top 10 on a EPA basis on both sides of the ball. The defense portion of that is because of all the turnovers that they're producing. But you you sort of reference it. LaFleur, just in general, 28 and 16 against the spread at home. Jordan Love at home, covered uh, uh, six of his last eight. Packers have covered seven of, of 11 at home since the beginning of, of 2023. And, you know, you're looking at the other side of the ball with the Texans. This will be the game where we really see – uh, the impact on on um, that offense not having Nico Collins. The Houston offense continues to be somewhat sluggish, but we have a sample size issue with this Houston Texans offense because when they have a healthy Joe Mixon, they they start cooking. And we saw it against New England. We started the first game of the season. We saw it for the portion of the game against the Bears that Joe Mixon was healthy, and we saw it uh, uh, just now against New England. They are a radically different offense when Joe Mixon um, is part of the the threat. And I'm kind of not feeling strongly about fading Houston because C.J. Stroud just keeps getting it done. Now, there are splits that show that C.J. Stroud is radically different on the road, radically different outdoors. But Houston um, continues to, to impress me. So I think I might stay away from this game. This game's interesting because, you know, I, I kind of share similar thoughts to House. I do think Houston is a little bit undervalued, but I think the Packers are the better team. And you, if you're getting, if you're laying two and a half at home with the Packers, and I think the Packers, like we're in an era where home field advantage doesn't matter as much. I think the Packers still have one of the best home field advantages in the NFL at this point in time. So I have to price that in. I also have to look at the fact that offensively, the Packers are better through EPA per play. I think the Packers' defense has been a lot better than I thought it would be. They're actually seventh in EPA per play. They actually have a better defense per EPA per play than the Texans. So I think this number might be a little bit short. I I agree with you, Raheem. I'm on Green Bay in this game. I I Mm -hmm. think it's a great spot for the Packers. The defense is better than people think. Jordan Love has come back and has hit the ground running and he's thrown the ball all over the place to all four of those wide receivers that they have. And I look at Houston's record, despite Stroud's brilliance, and you watch a bunch of these games and it feels like could have lost to Jacksonville, could have lost early in the year to Chicago, played around in that game in week two. Like there are a lot of these games with Houston where I'm like, eh, are they as good as their five and one record? How about this? The, the Houston Texans are five and one with a plus eight point point differential. So they're they're well overperforming that Pythagorean expectation. Meanwhile, the Packers are four and two with a plus forty one point differential, and they had a backup quarterback for two games. So the Packers, I mean, if you look at my model, my model makes them massive favorites. Actually, you know, as I'm like I'm talking about this more and more. I'm going to find myself on the Packers. Because there you I go. Just, Bet like, it. I, I already did. Get on it, baby. <laughs> I was going to, like, it was just going to be like a small, you know, lean or a small play. But I think this might be a big play because I think the Packers are better all around the board. And I think Jordan Love actually might be better than C.J. Stroud. Whoa. Yeah, let's make it a family wow. play. Let's, I didn't think you were going to go there, there. Raheem. Wow. <laughs> he okay. can't go there. I, I don't think he's wrong. He's got better weapons, that's for sure. And his accuracy, especially at home, is uh, I- impeccable. The other thing about this that I now you guys are talking me into it for the for the Packers a second straight road game for Houston. So I I had my you know house Houston going to handle it uh, on the road outdoors against New England against the rookie quarterback they handled it fine. But going to Lambeau's whole another deal and another outdoor game. All right, it's a family play. Green it's a family game, play. Let's go. I love that we talked ourselves into it across the board, and I love that we are aligned on this one. Love the Packers playing two and a half. We've got a lot more to get to. Big battle in the NFC North. I think it's a telling game between the Vikings and the Lions. we got more of the card to discuss when we come back. All right, guys, a lot more games to get to. I mean, these games are really, really good. Detroit and Minnesota. You know, Raheem, I feel like regression is coming for the Vikings. The problem I have with this game is now the loss of Aiden Hutchinson and how the Lion defense handles the loss of Aiden Hutchinson. I got to imagine 
Detroit, after what they did to the Cowboys with everybody watching them on Thursday, on uh, Sunday in that late afternoon window, I don't have a strong lean on this game. It's kind of a stay away for me. I almost feel like there's going to be so much public money all over the Lions. I don't know about that. I, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, because I think, you know, obviously the, the Minnesota Vikings are, you know, one of the two undefeated teams right now. So a lot of people are going to want to back the Vikings. You think now, so? Even yeah. even with their suspect London performance and Sam Donald, I feel like they still brought the pre- cash in. No, I get it. I get it. There are a lot of preconceived notions, though, regarding the Vikings and how, listen, Detroit was a top five favorite to go and win the Super Bowl, and now they're starting to flex on teams. I kind of feel like the narrative this week is going to be people going to the window and betting the Lions. Well, I think you're right because this line moved today. I mean, as we're taping it, when I sat down and started my research in the notes, this line was two and a half. It's down to one and a half right now on the FanDuel Sportsbook. Minnesota still favored one and a half at at home um hard game for me to handicap aside because i want to see detroit how they try and account for the aiden hutchinson loss it's a super significant loss obviously um the play for me is the over it's sitting right now i think at 49 and a half and um one thing that i really like about the, the the way this thing might play out no quarterback in the nfl has been better against the blitz than jared goff Think wow. about that for a minute. Didn't know that. Yeah. Wow. His, his success rate and his depth of target has been excellent against the Blitz. Um, so I do think that these two innovative, offensive-minded teams are going to be able to put up points on each other, especially the uh, uh, Detroit, you know, weakness in the secondary that Dallas could not take advantage of. But it, I think Minnesota – it looks like TJ Hawkinson is going to play. So – let let Minnesota, with all its weapons, be out there against this sort of vulnerable Detroit secondary. And if the pass rush for Detroit isn't getting home, I think we're going to see points. Because I'm not worried about Detroit with its weapons against um, this, this Vikings defense. The Vikings defense has been incredible, but this is a divisional matchup. I do think we're going to see some points um, this weekend, fellas. So to House's point, you know, Goff is completing 70% of his passes on 12.1 yards per attempt. So he knows how to handle this Flores defense. And if you look back, the last time the Vikings beat the Lions was week two of 2022. So the Lions have actually dominated this Vikings team over the last two seasons. So that's a concern for me. I actually, like, I would be looking towards the Lions. And, you know, a lot of people are going to talk about the loss of Aiden Hutchinson. I do think that's a big deal, particularly when the Lions get into uh, a game state where the other team is chasing points. That's when it's going to hurt the most. But I look at this Vikings team, and if you watch their performance in London, when Aaron Jones got hurt, that game changed everything. Like, that changed everything about the game. So the offense isn't the same without Aaron Jones. And even though he practiced on Monday, he's still week to week. And, you know, House mentioned that TJ Hawkinson – might play, but they haven't made a definitive decision on that. They actually said he might not play. So I think we need to be watching the engine report for those two. And that's probably a big part of why that line moved because if those two guys are out and this is, you know, a battle back and forth, I would rather have the Lions offense than the Vikings offense. Now, obviously the Vikings defense is better, but if golf knows how to handle that Vikings defense, and look, Aaron Rodgers had one of his best games of the season against this Vikings team. And Aaron Rodgers had to be good. So what is Jared Goff in this Lions offense going to do? I think I would lay it with the Lions, even though it seems square. Guys, when we return, our best bets for week seven in the NFL. House has a parlay for us. I might have a parlay for us. I'll have to stay tuned. We'll come right back. All right, before we say goodbye, best bets to send you on your way. House, the two-team parlay was a winner last week. What will the two-team parlay, or is it more than that? What's it going to be for week seven? Yeah, we're just going to go ahead and try and start the weekend off right, put everybody in a good mood with a W on Thursday night. We had the Denver Broncos on the money line. We talked it through. I like that Broncos defense going up against the rookie quarterback for the Saints. And then Bo Nix very quietly 
has been pushing the ball down the field a little bit more. Bo Nix over 191 and a half passing yards in this game. I do think that the Saints defense, that secondary, is susceptible to explosive plays. We watched it happen. Well, Bo Nix isn't exactly an explosive quarterback thus far in his pro career, but they are pushing the ball further down the field. The guy who is going to catch those balls is Cortland Sutton, who I'm looking at over 45 and a half receiving yards for this game. Little three-legger pays out plus 323. Let's have something good in the bankroll as we go into the weekend, fellas. Dream, what's your best bet? I'm not going to give out NFL right now. If you guys want my NFL pick, you guys are going to have to tune in on Sunday to the Ringer pregame show to get my pick. We're going to go with some NBA because NBA is a week away. We're going to go with the Denver Nuggets. Under 51 and a half wins. I really like this one. They lost Contavious Caldwell Pope. They lost Reggie Jackson. They lost their first round pick, Deron Holmes, in the first play of Summer League with a torn Achilles. This team doesn't have a lot of depth. They signed Russell Westbrook, who hasn't been good for any team the last couple of years. I think the vibes are all are off. You know, they're 0 and 4 in the preseason. Teams who don't do well in preseason, they tend to carry that over to the regular season. It's unfortunate because they have the best player in the game, Nikola Jokic, but he just doesn't have enough around him. Let's go under 51 and a half wins. I like it. I normally would not endorse the idea of fading the Joker, but a deep Western conference, not the same roster for Denver. Hey, they go and win 49 games. Our buddy Raheem is cashing himself a ticket. So I like the logic there. Now, guys, it has not been a kind year to the teasers. I have not really been betting NFL teasers. Well, you know what we're going to do? In week seven, I got a two-team tease. I've been thinking about it. I haven't bet. I legit have not bet a tease all year. I'm feeling it. I don't know why. It just has inspired me. I am going to tease down the Los Angeles Rams against the Vegas Raiders. The Raiders are a mess. Devontae Adams is gone. The Rams getting a little healthier. Give me the Rams just to win. Then I think you guys are going to mock me again. I'm teasing up the Cleveland Browns against the Cincinnati Bengals. That number is at six and a half. We're going to get double digits. The Browns have played Joe Burrow historically very, very tough. I don't need them to win the game. Keep it within single digits, and I'm cashing. Browns tease them up. Rams tease them down. Following the rules, Raheem Palmer, and away we go, baby. I love it. I love to see it. (laughs) And getting contrarian with Browns. I couldn't just give you two favorites and be lame. We wanted to really get cute with this particular tease to send you on your way. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of East Coast Bias. For House, Raheem, JJ signing off. We will be back Sunday, 11 a.m. Eastern in California. You never know where House is going to be. He's going to be involved somehow uh, for the Ringer Sunday pregame. Hour and a half, whole lot of winners. Yeah, OMG bets. Uh, that might maybe include the Mets for me on Sunday. Who the hell knows? On that note, boys are out. Be good, everybody.